Good day, how you going? So I'm going to talk about the uh, function buttons. There's the normal three function buttons, the back one, the front one, and the side one here. There's also, you can also assign the arrow buttons as well. And you can also assign that record button too, if you want. So it's all, it's all uh, programmable. You can assign whatever settings you want, uh, whatever's, wherever, whatever it allows you to assign to each button. Now the more popular ones are like back button focus, uh, magnify, and then uh, the one that I like is like preview, where you can see the preview of the depth of field, and there's other ones as well. So let's go through it. So you go into the menu, and in the function, and in the custom menu, you will see the button dial there under B. In here, you've got the three main ones. You can also set up the record button and you can also set the arrow buttons and if you've got a lens with a function button on it you've got to buy those uh, they're special lenses some lenses come with their own function button normally for image stabilization you can set up that button to do whatever you want as well the one that you might have heard of the most is back button fo focus so i mean you can pick any button you want but most people put it on the back button in this case the back button is function one so normally when you now press that function one button you'll do the auto exposure lock so that'll lock the exposure so if the exposure changes so nothing will change the exposure um, because it's locked so if it gets dark it's not changing anything i mean aperture priority if you want to set that up as a back button focus you have to go into the focus menu and in the AEL AFL there's some settings here you can do it for all three but for the single autofocus if you want that back button focus you can change the mode here so I think it's mode three so that's saying when you halfway press the shutter button it's going to lock the exposure when you fully press it it'll take the photo but when you press that AEL AFL button which we assign to a function one it's going to do the single autofocus when you press that function one the back button there there now the beauty of that is when you press it once you can press it and let it go and it's and it focuses it so if you're now when you press the shutter button it's not going to try and retain focus if you're moving the camera around and that um, it'll only lock the exposure and then you can take a photo it takes a bit of getting used to so i think a lot of people just use it for like when they're doing uh, action shots preview now this one is a depth of field preview what you see on the screen is what you're seeing at the, the maximum aperture so when you're looking through the viewfinder or the back screen what you're really seeing is what the scene looks like when it's at the most open aperture like you know f8 well f1.8 or f2 or whatever the, the biggest aperture that your lens can do so for example i'm at aperture 3.5 all right and you can see the little cross in the background there is um, out of focus so because the depth of field is only um so 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 big you know from there to there so what's happening then is that's at the highest aperture 3.5 so that's what the picture is going to look like now if i um, want to get that in focus the the cross in the background normally what you would do is just increase the aperture so you're shutting it down but you notice nothing's changing it's not putting it in focus it's only going to show you the depth of field of the biggest aperture if i put it up to f11 there or f 14 if i want to see what the depth of field is press that preview which i assigned to function one and there it is and it'll also show you the depth of field so that's that 3.5 i'll press the preview and that's that f14 one touch white balance what the hell is that the bread man's here Hot bread, the hot bread. You get the hot bread. Welcome to the world of Corona. Autofocus area select. So what that does is just bring up the the screen so you can move it around. 
Really, it's the same as pressing the arrow buttons. Home position setting of the autofocus. All that's doing is you've got to set it up first. So if I set that to F1, all right, the actual home position needs to be set <clears throat> in the autofocus area. It's in this button here, <clears throat> there. So for that one, say I'll, I'll move it to, I don't know, put it to the bottom right, the bottom left there. So that's now set to, the, that's the home position for there. Now, if I press the function one button now, it puts it down there. If I move it, if I move this around and move it over to this, for instance, now it's going to focus there forever. But if I press that function one, it goes to that home position. So if you've got a, fa like a favorite spot that you always want to refer back to quickly, you, you can use that. The next one is manual focus. So I'm auto focusing now, but I want to go to bang, now it's in manual focus. The next one is RAW and JPEG quality modes. So it, what it does is it turns RAW on or off. So currently there, I'm in large fine. Now, if I press now the function which I set up, it's going to go to large fine plus raw. If you just want to take some photos and you don't want, you don't particularly want raw, but then you see something that you really want and you think, oh, I'll, 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 need, I'll need a raw shot for that. Just quickly press it and bang, you've got the raw image plus the JPEG. That's good for like later on when you, you just, you don't want your camera, your camera full of raw images that you're never going to edit anyway. But then saying that, I mean, if you do take a shot and you think, oh shit, I wish I had a raw image. So just leave it on the both, you know, <clears throat> your memory cards are big enough. Test picture, that'll show you the image on the back of the screen in preview mode, but it uh, won't save it to the card. The next one is for the, the fishies. I don't know what the hell that is. Little fishes and big fishes. I'm never going to use it. Uh, adjust exposure compensation. I mean, that's completely stupid. Uh, you got the front button to do that anyway. It's the live guide. So if you just want to bring the live guide up, that's that. Remember that one in when you're in auto mode? The digital teleconverter. That's a good one. It'll, zo yeah, it'll zoom in. Digital teleconverter. Keystone compensation. So like when you're filming buildings and stuff and you want to align it properly. Okay. So that's playing with the skew. So when you've got a building and stuff and the lines are a bit out of skew, that's that keystone thing. This one, magnify. This one's I use a lot. If you want to use, like, especially if you're auto fo uh, manually focusing or you want to check peaking. High dynamic range. So you can go straight into high dynamic range. So that'll choose the high dynamic range of what it was set to. So currently the HDR high is set to... So I set it to two, which is taking four pictures. All right. And now because I've set the function one button for HDR, it puts it into HDR. You see the little icon there at the top, at the top there. So now it'll take that four shots because it's in HDR two. Bracketing, same again. Whatever you set up in the bracketing, it'll just take you straight into it and then do it. ISO and white balance if I choose that now it brings up the menu okay so it only brings up the menu and you can then change it it's a bit like in that multi-function there's an option for this as well multi-function so that's that special menu it's def by default it's on function 2 if you press the function button it takes you to the first one in that so what you what you do is you hold it down and then you turn the wheel, so hold it down, and then you can turn the back wheel while you've got it held down, and then you can pick more things. It's like a quick um, shortcut way of getting to highlights and shadows, color creator, ISO white balance, which I just talked about, and the magnify, and then image aspect ratio. Peaking, now this one's good for when you want to see if you're in focus you can use that one's good to be in combination with magnify so you can zoom in and in combination with the peaking you can pinpoint the focus uh, especially when you want to use manual focus so for instance i put function three as the magnify 
and picking as the function one, zoom in, and then function one, and that gives you the peaking. A better way for that is to go into the autofocus, and there's this thing here called manual focus assist, and then you can have both of those functions on when you want to manually focus. So if I put both of them on, all right, and then I move into manual focus. Okay, so when I now try to manually focus, it zooms in and you've got the peaking and the and the magnification in the, in just when you're trying to when you when you're trying to manually focus, which is what you want that those two features for anyway. So rather than use the function buttons. Just set that, it's easier. Level display, that's the turn on that level gauge thing, but that's only for when you're in the func when the, for the function, that's only for when you're looking through the electronic viewfinder. S O V F. It can turn the electronic viewfinder into the like an old school viewfinder in uh, digital SLR. You'll see the image as it really truly is without any enhancements. So it's like looking for a digital SLR where what you see is the true example of the, the light that's coming in. So going back to the my sets, what that is, is you can set up a scenario in the camera and then you can set it into my set and then you can assign one of the function buttons to activate it. I want it in aperture priority, the ISO to be 200, sharpness to be plus 2, whatever. You, you set it up to what you want. You go into my set and you go to my set one, for instance, and then you set it. Now, I want to assign a button for that to get to quickly access it. Button dial again, button function. Let's put it on button function three. And oh, let's put it on my set one. So button function three will activate my set one, which we've already saved in my set one. So for instance, let's go to shutter priority, just to just to show, to show you that it works. Now when I press function button three, it goes to the little symbol there, you'll see. You're in my set one, oh you idiot. You're in my set one, and then it went to the setting that you had. That's useful for when you're out in the field, and you haven't got time to switch. I, I used it for when I want to take action shots and then I want to quickly switch to taking single shots. Okay, so for the function of the arrows up, down, left and right, by default it's set to change the autofocus. When you use the up and down it changes the autofocus. But if you don't want that, you can sign um, functions to them. So you get extra function buttons really when you think of it. You can either have it off, so actually the buttons won't even do anything, the, the, the directional buttons, or you can directional functions. So now when you go back up, you can see these two are active, and then you can assign it. Uh, this dial function, really all that's for is to change this, the change around and just tailor it just to what you like. It's like, you know, on the PlayStation, if, you, if you're used to your controller, you know, if you're a goofy foot, you know, you can, you know, put the F number, the function at the, 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 the front dial, or you can put it on the back dial. And then this mode dial function, what this can do, remember the my sets, instead of assigning it to a function button, you can actually assign it to one of the, the, the wheels. I could pick this one here, scene mode, which, you know, I never use and I could assign that to my set one. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna shoot birds today, so I'll put it on the bird mode. And you know that, you know, this mode here is for shooting birds, you know. So you can even maybe put a little sticker there if you want so, to remember. Yeah, so thanks for watching. Uh, it's a pretty boring video, that one, but that's what the function buttons do. So I'll, I'll catch you next video. Is terrorised about five staff members with a hammer before they were able to lock themselves away in a cupboard. He's gone on to take a small amount of cash 
and drugs. Hey, tonight, a large-scale search has been enacted for this man, as well as his getaway car, a white Holden Cruise. Okay, hey. Elizabeth, thank you. Bill Clinton has ripped into Donald Trump as Joe Biden was officially nominated as the Democrat to take him on. And today, the President delivered a broadside of his own as he stepped up his campaign in the battleground states. With Melania Trump in tow, the President marks a milestone in American history. To celebrate the 100th anniversary of women securing the right to vote and suffering. Issuing a pardon to women's suffrage activist Susan B. Anthony, who was arrested for illegally voting in 1872. The move seen as an attempt to win back suburban women voters. Donald Trump then attacking the Obamas and his November opponent. The bad job, Biden. And Obama. And if they did a good job, I wouldn't be here. I'd be building buildings someplace and having a good time. Instead, he's fighting for re election, making stops in battleground states today from Iowa to Arizona, arriving off Air Force One to a warm welcome.